Good morning legends, it is a, another outstanding day here in Melbourne and uh, I'm going around to meet up with Sean and Chris around at the Einsteins for a coffee. I've just woken up, they've been for a ride and uh, so I'm feeling guilty. So Jarris is in Einstein's which is just around the corner from my house but he is the world champion coffee art legend. Uh, went to Japan, was it Japan? Japan? Went to Japan for the world championships and won it. So this is the sort of thing that he can do. Let's check that out. This is the way I used to come to my old job. Very scenic, and especially in the middle of summer, there's uh, humans everywhere. All right, so Shawnee and I are heading over to Bastion Cycles, which uh, these guys have a very interesting story, which we'll get into soon. But uh, we're gonna go check out the unique style in which they make carbon fiber bikes combined with titanium. So it's obviously still a work in progress, needs polishing, but, um, and a final coat of clear, but that's uh, black chrome and uh, like a Ferrari red uh, oh, logo. Is cold, isn't it? So you can see how it sort of glints and then like that's his nickname. What's his nickname? Bink. Bink. yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is going to a client in uh, Indonesia Titanium and even steel bikes, everyone loves the ride quality. Mm. They're super smooth. And that's interesting because when you look at the stiffness of some of those bikes, they're actually stiffer than carbon bikes. They're heavier, they're stiffer. Um, and so there is something about the material and the properties of the material that lends itself to that ride quality. We narrowed it down, our opinion, we haven't proven this uh, scientifically, but the key contributor to that aspect of a titanium bike is actually the way the joints are constructed. And so by using titanium at the joints, we're able to achieve a lot of that um, smooth ride quality. Um, all of our customers comment after a 60, 100K ride, they feel fresh, so much fresher than previously before. And then on the carbon, because we're, still, we're not using titanium tubing, we've got the carbon tubing on a bigger impact when the whole frame has time and enough load to sort of twist and distort, the damping really comes into play. And so the other feedback we get is how stable they are, um, descending uh, how much stiffness there is uh, out of the saddle. We're able to achieve that in a lightweight because we use the carbon fiber. And so it's really the best of both worlds. The idea came about in 2014 when we uh, heard that Toyota was gonna be shutting down operations. Um, they were gonna be closing the technical center where we worked, which was sort of Toyota's research and development facility here in Australia, yep. out in Clayton. We didn't really want to do what was out there either. And so it was, well, let's do something for ourselves. Like this is our chance. There's not going to be another opportunity like this. And that is in the sense that we kind of pushed into it. <laughs> um, yeah. and, and then Toyota was very good. We got a decent, um, I guess, package as part of the, the shutdown. And so that gave us some capital uh, to invest. And then We'd been riding together for years and all passionate cyclists and had always talked about bikes and different designs and what we would do if we would do one. Um, and so it seemed like the perfect opportunity to, to take that step sideways, I guess, stay within engineering, but um, move from automotive into, into bicycles. They're a modular design yeah. with uh, 3D printed titanium lugs, essentially. Yeah and filament wound carbon fiber tubes in between that. So this method of construction that we're using lets us do custom geometry quite easily in one sense by changing the design of the lugs. Um, and they're 3D printed, so there's no tooling or jigs or 
any uh, moulds required to do different geometry for every single bike. So each bike that we make can be made with custom geometry. So lugs come in from our supplier in New Zealand. Um, some of the tubing comes in from a supplier in Sydney. Um, the chainstays we make in-house over here. So really lugs come in, they get machined first. So we machine all the bearing seats, we tap all the threads. The threads are actually printed in, but then we chase them with a tap to clean them up. And then they go into a polishing process, which is a bit of die grinding by hand, a bit of uh, linishing, a bit of vibratory finishing. I'll show you the machine if you come over, which is very loud, but this does a lot of the, the polishing work. So I'll just turn it on. So you can come in and have a look at it. So that just uses a cyclonic action with a, uh, a very hard media that just, you know, through lots of high frequency vibrations, just grinds down the surface of the, um, of the titanium. And so that does most of the work. It'll spend up to 24 hours in here, you know, over two sessions. We usually do it at night because it's so loud. So we turn it on, come back in the morning, turn it off. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a reasonably expensive piece of kit um, and it, it does a lot of the hard work, but yeah, we do still do a fair bit of hand, hand work on the lugs as well. So you can see the raw tube when it comes in is quite uh, rough. Mm. Certainly not a, a premium aesthetic finish. There's ridges there from the heat shrink tape, which is used to cure the carbon fibre. Mm. So it's a lot of hand labour sanding that back. So this is one of the tests that we do. This is simulating repeated brake forces okay. on a frame. So you can see how much the tubes are flexing and deflecting out of the way. Yeah, you can slightly see it, eh? Yeah. During development, yeah, the frame did 100,000 cycles of this. Uh, it takes about three or four days. We've got it going quite slow. Um, but yeah, it's a significant amount of time. We do another one where we pull down on the seat. Now uh, that's what this fixture's for. Um, and that's done at a higher load and that's to simulate, you know, your weight bouncing on, on the saddle. All right, so I'm going up to see James now. He has taken the measurements of my canyon and he's hypothetically turning my canyon into a bastion. Is that right? Yeah, that's the plan. That's the plan? Yeah, that's the plan. He's got some fancy looking computer stuff going on here. I measured off your bike, Mark, that uh, your saddle set back, you've got it at 45 mil. You've got a uh, bar drop of 110 mil. We're graphing your bike for steering factor and response factor here, this little black square. Yeah. So compared to some other bikes on the market, uh, it's a little bit more agile. And of course, you've got to choose what you want in the custom drop in the dropouts, mate. What text do you want in the in the dropout? We put Maven or Maven Maven Maven. M A V A E M A V N Yeah A T O R Righto. Here you go, Mark. Uh, that has regenerated oh it's generated your bike um, cleanly first time, which is nice. And I'm not sure if it has the text has worked. Yep, so that there you go. Yes! Mavenator. This is the only thing I care about. Yeah. <laughs> can you see that? I don't know if we can see that. It's focus, focus. It's got Mavenator on it. That's my new branding. Yeah. The Mavenator. Oh. Red Mavenator. No, it's too hard. <laughs> too hard. That's too, too hard. Much. Yeah. So from there. All of those parts that have been generated need to be printed. Yep. So... And that's it. It's as simple as that. Oh, jeez. That was easy. It was easy looking from where you are, yeah, maybe. But anyway, the parts that make up the bike, all the lug set, is um, they're arranged in their print orientation, yeah. one build plate. So that data gets exported and then uh, and printed. All right, in the end, I think we spent about four hours at Bastion, did we? Yeah, it was a little bit of time. Like maybe four hours we spent with the boys. We went and had lunch with them. So awesome guys. They've got this little hub of uh, like a cycling community hub in there. They've got, uh, you know, Bikes by Steve, a painter comes in and does some work in there. They've got all sorts of things going on. So 
They're a great bunch, good humans, and uh, they do pretty, pretty good bikes. What do you reckon? Well, yeah, I mean, there's, there's just so much that goes into the bike, I guess, a lot more than, you know, even I realize, and I've kind of followed them quite closely. So it's like, that's why we were there for so long, because like, they just kept showing us more and more stuff. I didn't realize how involved they were. So it was interesting, really interesting. Yeah, I mean, I thought I was smart until I met those guys. All right, you legends, that is the end of the vlog. So it was really good catching up with the guys from Bastion. They are doing some pretty amazing things coming from the, the engineers in the car industry into the cycling industry. And they're just doing some, some very technical, smart things within the industry. The good thing about them is their, uh, their moral compass is so good. They're sharing the IP and they're sharing the technology with other brands. And so, I covered this in pretty much an hour and 10 minute vlog or video interview with them. I couldn't put all of it in today's vlog because obviously I had to condense it right down, but there's an hour and 10 minutes, which I'm gonna post at a later date. Uh, I just wanna make you make sure you guys understand there is no sponsorship stuff in this. Uh, the guys have offered to give the Mavens a 10% discount, but in terms of a sponsorship thing, arrangement with me, there is nothing. I literally rang them up because I heard they were former Toyota employees and engineers and that they're doing awesome things in the bike industry. I simply just wanted to share that with you guys. So there is no commercial agreement whatsoever. And on the whole advertising and commercial agreement thing, I just want to I want to have a chat with you guys on Thursday. I'm planning a video on Thursday to really outline some changes with Cycling Maven, the vlog and uh, some up and coming future plans. And I wanted to get you guys across that. So it's, you know, I'll explain it all on Thursday, but uh, stay tuned for that. Hopefully I have a vlog up tomorrow. And as I say, I'll have this full interview up within the next couple of weeks. So until next time, I'll see you guys then. Let's talk about the other ones though, the gimmicks. Yeah. Who's got the gimmicks? There's definitely some other bigger companies that have a very strong marketing department, I think, that probably yeah. influences some of the engineering decisions that happen and some of the things that get onto bikes where they're, you know, next season, what are we gonna have that's gonna make people upgrade to the next bike, yeah. You know, the next model, even yeah. though, you know, there's maybe not very sound engineering reasons to do do some of the things that get implemented. Who's this? Who are we talking about here, hey, boys? Come on, let's oh, name I'm some stop, names. Stop, 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 <laughs> let's name some names. <laughs> Shawnee, you could do it. Yeah, even I'm not going to say it. <laughs> work it out. It's a pretty, it's a pretty well-known brand that seems to like one set of letters, and they just use that for every model. So you can work it out. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh no. No comment. No comment. <laughs>